Hello guys, my name is Honey Golightly, and like Miss Jasmine Masters, I have something to say about RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7, and I'm not happy. But before we get there, let's just go ahead and clear the air, and let me talk about the season in general so far, so you guys know where I stand. Okay, Season 7, let me look at my notes. RuPaul's Drag Race Season 7. I love it. I'm really liking the way it's going so far, and I think especially compared to the past two to three seasons, I like that there's not so much an emphasis on the comedy and camp aspect of the competition. Which I know is weird coming from me because when it comes down to it, I kind of tend to lean towards more of that aspect of the community. However, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that the camp queens are any better than the rest of the girls, which is... You know, the show being what it is these days for the world of drag is kind of what it is, whether it's intended to or not, what it has force-fed us. That's not the case at all. There are many different types of drag, and each one is totally as valid as the next. My opinion. But I do still love the camp girls. Don't get me wrong. So anyway, my favorites of this season are, in no particular order, Fame, Ginger, Jaden, um, I love Katya. I will tell you one thing, I did not think I would like Pearl at all preseason. She has really changed my mind and blew my expectations out of the water. You know, obviously this is kind of a weird time to be saying this, considering her track record for the past couple of weeks, but I really do like Pearl right now. Also, Max completely surprised me. I did not expect that at all. I think Max is the dark horse of this competition, and I think she will go far, and I'm calling it right now Miss Congeniality? Maybe? Probably? Yeah, my pick anyway. <laughs> okay, Untucked. Source of a lot of controversy this season. I like the new Untucked. I really do. I mean, I don't like that it's not on low anymore and that I have to wait, but at the same time, I don't have to blow my load for Drag Race all in one night and I get to space it out. But the new format I really like, and just hear me out. I know that there's a ton of you out there who don't like it, but the rawness and the realness of it is just really a breath of fresh air. I mean, after all the fuzzy pink pussy boxes and the, oh my god, my parent I've not seen in 20 years, I'm crying. Not making fun of that because that's terrible, but I mean, you guys know what I mean. It's just been oversaturated with unnecessary bullshit. This new Untucked, I just really can't say enough good things about it. I really like the behind the scenes feel to it. That's something that we've really not gotten from the show, and I mean, I know that you guys miss, like, the overproduced Untucked of the past, but I mean, we already have the show, and it really wasn't much different from the show as it was, so this is something, you know, it's good for a change. Okay, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, it's time for me to rant. I really do not understand, as gay people and as members of the LGBT community, and I've said this many times before, I'm sure some of you will have heard this from me before, I do not understand how we can be as hateful as we are. All the shit that we have faced in our lives, all the adversity, all the challenges and obstacles we have to, we've had to overcome, and how many of us have actually come out as better people, as opposed to raging, nasty cunts? Not very many. They're few and far between, to say the least. The fandom of this show is one of the most frustrating things I've ever experienced in my entire life. And yeah, it is mostly, for the most part, just this show in particular, which is very strange to me, because I've been a huge fan and very involved in the fandom of many different shows and just movies and books and everything throughout my entire life. I have never seen the kind of shit that goes down on RuPaul's Drag Race after the race with the fans. It's unbelievable to me. <laughs> Trixie's Elimination. Do I agree with it? Hell Fucking no. I think it's one of the most unjust eliminations that the show has ever seen, but the show has never shied away from unjust eliminations. 
I was upset when Ben left last season, when April Perrion left last season, um, Morgan McMichaels, Kelly Mantle, I could go on and on and on. Make fun of me all you want, but Elisa Summers, it broke my fucking heart when she was gone after the first episode. Preseason, she was one of my favorites, and I was devastated. But let me say this. The show must go on. And the show cannot please every single person that watches it. I don't know if you've ever noticed this or not, but the title of the show isn't America's Next Drag Star or America's Got Drag or anything like that. It is called RuPaul's Drag Race. And the decisions on the show are solely RuPaul's. And I know a lot of people like to say, oh, the producers are pulling the strings. They're the puppet masters. But let me tell you something. RuPaul is a motherfucking executive producer of the show. And from my knowledge, the other people that are also producers of the show, Ru has known for years. It's not some big evil corporation that's coming down on the world of drag, okay? Nothing goes on on the show that RuPaul doesn't want. And it's RuPaul's motherfucking decision. And the fact that people would turn their backs on Ru and have so much fucking hatred over one contestant being eliminated is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Let's just be real, it's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's just the way I fucking feel. I love Trixie. She was amazing. I think that she, out of talent-wise, she didn't really show it that much on the show, but she was probably in the top six most talented of the entire cast. I don't think she should have been eliminated. But what the fuck am I going to do about it? Am I going to stop watching the show? Hell no. There have been many people in the past that I didn't want to go home. But that's what makes it more fun. You know, if it started out and all the people we hated went home first and all the people we liked were just left last, there is no fucking fun in that. And Trixie outside the show was a lot better than what we've seen of her in the context of the show. So, you know, to the judges who may not have all this background on her, we don't know how they feel because we know Trixie outside of the show. You know, we don't know how she come off just fresh out of the gate compared to all these other people to them. So yeah, I think it's really great that the fans have showed Trixie so much support and been so nice to her in light of this unfortunate situation. But to the ones who've been so catty and completely immature and unnecessary, just grow the fuck up and get over it and move on. Okay? Just move on. If you want to stop watching the show, that's your prerogative. Stop. Go the fuck away and stop talking about it with people who still want to see it. Sorry. Now, that brings me to my next subject, Miss Jasmine Masters, who was, spoiler alert, eliminated last week. Can somebody explain to me why there was so much backlash against her? Explain it to me, because I didn't even see it. I was expecting her to be 10 hundred million times worse than she actually was on the show. I think on the show, Jasmine Masters was kind of a sweet person. I think when she knew when she was in trouble, she emotionally shut down. But I mean, I never thought that she was that rude. She shares opinions that differ from mine, but that doesn't mean I have to fucking hate her and send her hate mail, calling her um, racist remarks and nearly forcing her to consider quitting drag. And this harkens back to things I've said before in the past about the younger fans of the show. I love the younger fans. I think it's amazing. I love my younger fans. And a lot of them can be great, but a lot of them have some growing up to do. And the fact is, a big majority of the show are people that are under 18 who need some maturing to be done to them who need to grow up and face the fucking real world, and who need to put the time in that it takes to have a good head on their shoulders. Because a lot of these fucking people do not, and it is absolutely ridiculous. Here's what you need to understand. A person 
can have a different opinion from you and you can still like them. People are multi-dimensional. They're not flat, one-dimensional figures. It's not cut and dry, black and white. You know, everybody in this world, you are not going to find a single person who agrees with you on every single thing. And you know, just seeing some of the things that were said to Jasmine after she was eliminated, how the fuck can there be somebody who is a fan of drag who is also racist? That blows my fucking mind. That absolutely blows my fucking mind. When I seen the sort of things that people were saying to her, I was floored and I feared for the future of humanity. I'm telling you, this community never ceases to amaze me. It's one of the greatest things that I've ever been brought into in my entire life. It's one of the best things that's ever happened to me to be a part of it in some aspects, but at the same time, it's a mind fuck, let me tell you. And I mean, you know, you don't know how other people feel about things. And I say that because, you know, negative criticism, haters, um, hate comments, racist remarks, stuff like that, you know, you don't know how it affects somebody else. Me, personally, I've said this before, you know, it doesn't affect me that much because I have dealt with it so much in my life and it started at such an early age that I am numb to it and my skin is a lot thicker than most people's but you know everybody is not like me. You can say that to somebody and it completely kill them inside. There have been people who have committed suicide over things that have been said to them over the internet or just over bullies in general. And let me tell you right now, the people that tweet these queens telling them now there's a difference between negative criticism you know or criticism in general and just unnecessary evil heartless things that these fans can say to these people you are a bully you are a bully as much as we have tried our best to overcome things like that in our own personal lives how the fuck are you going to be a bully is it because the things in your life have been so bad that it's just made you that way? Or is it because you think you're being funny or cute because there's this huge underlying culture of drag to be shady or reading and, you know, you think that makes your status in this community higher? Please fucking let me know because I can't seem to wrap my head around it. I can't. So anyway, to sum things up, to wrap this up because it's already getting too long, all of you crazy, senseless, sensationalist fans need to calm the fuck down because it is just a show. It's just a television show made for entertainment, okay? And life goes on after the show ends. Life will go on for everybody involved. And there's no need to bring somebody down so much over something that happens within the context of it. And the same token, these people are real people. They're not trading cards. They're not, you know cartoon characters for you to pick apart. They are real people at the end of the day involved in all of this. Anyway, so all that being said, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the season and I hope you guys follow me across all social media platforms because that's pretty much where I vent and share my opinions about the show because I don't really have time to work in, you know, like weekly reviews or anything to my YouTube channel. So yeah, you should follow me across all platforms anyway. The links to all that stuff will be at the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts and opinions, or if you have anything to say about the stuff that I said, I'd love to read it. And until next time, take care, and I love you all. Bye, guys.